So we know that particle motion has a lot to do with f, f prime, and f double prime. It just is maybe more challenging in the interpretation and more specific in how we apply them. So just kind of rolling through the same things that we did with f, f prime, and f double prime, but more specific. So if we're moving to the left, that means that that first derivative, or v of t, is negative. If we're moving to the right, that first derivative is positive. Or we could be talking about something falling, and in that case, this would be down and positive would be up. If we're talking about something being at rest, the velocity is equal to zero. And if it changes directions, that velocity changes sign. So it's headed left, and now it's going right, or vice versa. If we're looking for a max velocity, we would want to see where its derivative goes from positive to negative, just like from f to f prime. If that goes from increasing to decreasing, that means we have a max on the original there. And same thing, if we're furthest from zero, that means that we have a max for the position. So that means its derivative goes from positive to negative. If we're talking about speed increasing, that means that the acceleration and velocity have the same sign, where if it's decreasing, acceleration and velocity are going against each other, so they have different signs. And then the last thing is that for total distance, we're looking at that integral of the absolute value of v of t. So we're going to make any distance, whether it's left or right, it's going to make it positive. Whereas if we're looking for just displacement, so where it ended up, then we're going to just take the, abs or the integral of v of t because we don't care whether those negatives are thrown in or not if we're looking at displacement. For our first example, we're looking for the max acceleration that's attained on this interval 0 to 3 when we're given the velocity of a particle. So remember when we're looking for a max, that means that we have to take the derivative of whatever we're talking about to look for where it goes from positive to negative because that means what we're talking about is going from increasing to decreasing. So since we're talking acceleration, I have to not only find the derivative of velocity to find acceleration, but I want to take the derivative one more time so that I'm looking at the derivative of acceleration. So this is going to tell me wherever a prime goes from positive to negative, that's where my acceleration has a max, a relative max. So this is a line and it's positive has an x-intercept at zero. So it's going from negative to positive, which is not what we expected. We wanted it to go from positive to negative. So remember, since we're looking for the max on this interval, I also have to plug in zero and I have to plug in three into my acceleration to see which one of these is going to be the max acceleration because it wasn't at zero. So one of my endpoints happens to be zero, so I know it's not happening there. So I'm plugging in my a of 3 to see if that is where the, I have a max. And when I plug that into my acceleration, I should get 21 because that is my max acceleration. Our next example gives us a graph of position. And remember, anytime you have a graph like that, write really big somewhere what you're talking about for the graph. It tells us that there are horizontal tangents at 1 and 5 and then a point of inflection at 2. The question it's asking is, when is the velocity of the particle increasing? So you've got to be careful with this wording because it's not asking for when the velocity is positive. It wants to know where the velocity is increasing, which means that its slope is positive or a of t is positive. So for the acceleration to be positive, that's a second derivative. So that means on my original graph of position, I should be concave up. So I'm looking at this piece right here, and to know exactly where this ends, I'm looking back into my problem to see that it has a point of inflection at t equals 2. So that's what tells me it goes from being concave up to concave down at 2. So that means my acceleration being positive is from 0 to 2. In our next example, we're going to get a little bit of integral action. It gives us the velocity function for this particle and then it tells us that it's at position 2 at time t equals 0 and wants to know a different position when time t equals 1. So first, if I'm talking about position, I need to work backward from my velocity. So my position here is going to be the integral of my velocity. When I go to integrate 3t squared plus 6t, 
I'm just using a power rule, so raising that a power and then dividing by 3, raising t a power and then dividing by 2, and then always that plus c. So this is where our initial condition comes in that at time t equals 0, so if I plugged in 0 for t, I'm just going to be left with c, so that means that c has to be 2. So my position is this t cubed plus 3t squared plus 2. And then we're looking for the position when t equals 1. So this would be a 1 plus 3 plus 2, which is 6. Let's try a few on your own here. This first one gives a graph of a car's velocity and then wants to know the distance traveled by the car from zero to when it comes to a complete stop. So it looks like zero to eight seconds. So recall that to find the total distance that something has traveled, we're taking the integral over that interval of the absolute value of velocity. And for this particular problem, we really don't have to worry about the absolute value part because all of these velocities are positive. So if I'm taking the integral over this interval, I'm really just finding the area. So first I would need to know that one of these boxes is 10. And then I need to figure out how many boxes am I talking about, and that's going to estimate my area pretty closely. If you wanted to use one of the Riemann sums, that would work as well. I would probably use a midpoint Riemann sum or a trapezoidal rule maybe. But just counting these is fine. I went through and counted all of the full squares and then I went back through and said okay this one was almost an entire square so is this one this one and this one at the top I figured that all of those together would make the 21st square so if we multiply this together that would tell me that it had traveled 210 feet again pause the video and try this one on your own as well trying to figure out where this particle is at rest given the position. So first, if we're looking for where a particle is at rest, that means that our velocity has to equal zero. Finding the velocity, we're taking the derivative of our position, and even though we're given something kind of generic, I can still use the product rule and take the derivative of t minus a is just going to be 1 times t minus b plus the derivative of t minus b is 1 times t minus a. Cleaning that up a little bit, distribute my 1s, I guess, and then adding over my a plus b and solving for t, I get that my velocity equals 0 when t equals a plus b over 2. Okay, last example, we're going to go back to total distance. So this time you're given the equation of velocity and trying to figure out the total distance between 0 and 3. Pause the video, try this one on your own as well. So to find the total distance, we're looking at that integral of 0 to 3 at the absolute value of v of t. But this one is a little bit more complicated than the one that we had a graph for, because remember for these pieces that are negative, if there are any pieces that are negative, we want to make sure that we change the sign to where it's giving us a positive area and not a negative one. So off to the side over here, I'm going to go ahead and analyze what's inside the absolute value. It is a parabola. It's got x-intercepts at 0 and 6. And I can see that since it's negative, it will be positive in between 0 and 6, negative on either side. So because my integral is from 0 to 3, I actually don't have to worry about the absolute value because from 0 to 6, that function is positive, so I don't have to worry about having any negative areas. So I can just jump into using integration. If you didn't analyze this, you may have gotten lucky there. Um, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, finding that integral, and then plugging in my 3 minus my plugging in 0, and then we should get that the total distance is 18. For that last question, I ended up revealing the question below it, so if you're curious, the answer to number 7 is D.